Hey, what's up? Today, we're gonna do a little bit of a different format. This is gonna be a weeknighting style video, but instead of doing it narrated, we're gonna do it live. Mainly to show you guys that this recipe can indeed be made in a short period of time. Normally I'll say, oh, it's like a 15 minute recipe, and the people in the comments will be like, no, it's not, it took me an hour. So we're gonna do this all in one go to show you that this one is legitimately a very fast recipe. Anybody would like this. What's the recipe? It's called chicken in the wok, and it's kind of inspired by something that we used to eat as kids all the time. But it's basically just like a chicken and vegetable wok stir fry, and it's very delicious. It comes together in like 15 to 20 minutes. So to prove that we're actually doing this real time, I'm gonna start a stopwatch on my phone. There we go. Now we're rolling. By the way, my wife Lauren is here and she's gonna be making sure that I stay on track and that we don't burn the house down because I'm using a propane burner here <laughs> instead of my gas one. Let's do this thing. So we're at 18 seconds already. The first thing I'm gonna do on a weeknight stir fry is to get my rice going, which seems silly, but that's part of the process here. So I'm gonna use my rice cooker. If you don't have one of these, you should definitely get one. This one was like 20 bucks from Target, and it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. So I like to use a scale to measure my rice. You can use a cup if that's more of your thing. My basic weeknight rice recipe is always the same. It's like 400 grams of water-ish, big pinch of salt, maybe like three or four grams. And then I'll tear that out and then grab some rice. The rice that I use more than any other is botan. It's like a medium grain Calrose rice, they call it number one extra fancy. It's just a very nice starchy medium grain rice. And I'm not washing it because it's a premium rice and it's already been washed and then fortified with a bunch of minerals to replace what they took away when they polished it. So you don't need to wash it. And if how you, many grams of that? 300 grams of rice, 400 grams of water, strong pinch of salt. It's going into the rice cooker real quick. Just hit white rice and we're rolling. So now we got a bunch of chopping, not a bunch, like three minutes worth of chopping to get everything ready for the stir fry because something like this happens really quickly and you wanna make sure that all of your stuff is ready so that you're not stressed during this part. This part ends up being kind of fun. So I'm gonna set my scale aside for now and grab the stuff I need to out of the fridge. So I'm grabbing some chicken, I'm grabbing some mushrooms, some bok choy, a knob of ginger, and some garlic. I got, a, <laughs> I got about 19 extra packs of bok choy in there just in case I like burn some. I was like really worried that I was gonna screw this up and we were gonna have to do it a bunch of extra times. So we're gonna be eating bok choy for the next forever. Okay, first thing I'm gonna cut is the chicken. I've got an extra board out here. Yes, this is an extra dirty dish, but it keeps raw chicken off of my larger cutting board, which is actually a lot harder to wash. And in a given week, if I'm just cutting vegetables on the wood, I'm not gonna really wash it. I'll just wipe it off with a damp cloth because it's not gonna be that dirty. So I've got like a 10 ounce chicken breast here and I'm just gonna cut it into thin slices, crosswise like this. I guess this would technically be against the grain. On a chicken breast, the grain runs like roughly this way. So we're gonna cut perpendicular to that. That's just to allow us to get the tenderest result. And this would actually be a little bit easier to cut if it was like colder. This is fridge temp, but if it was in the freezer for five minutes, it'd be a little bit easier to slice. So one breast, 10 ounce breast like this should give me maybe 15 slices like that. And then I'm gonna come back and cut those slices into thinner strips. We want something that's gonna cook very quickly. That's what's important here. Not only just to make the recipe easier, but when it comes to lean meats, especially chicken, cooking it quickly is kind of the best case scenario. The longer it's exposed to heat, the more moisture it's gonna lose, and it's just gonna end up being kind of tough and leathery. Of course, if you're worried about this chicken getting dry, you could definitely just use chicken thighs. Another good meat alternative would be shrimp. That's quick cooking, super easy, or like pork loin. Pork loin is kind of the same thing as chicken breast in a lot of ways. It's not nearly as fatty as the other cuts of pork and cooks pretty quickly. No steak? Steak would work with steak. Sometimes you gotta take extra steps to make sure that it's gonna be tender. Check out my beef and broccoli recipe if you wanna learn more about that. Just because like cooking beef to well done, it's kinda hard to do well. <laughs> Yeah, so there's just a little bit more like detail that goes into it. So I've got my chicken cut up here. I'm gonna set this aside for now 
and I'm gonna wash my knife off. The next thing I'm gonna cut up real quick is some Shanghai style bok choy. It's kind of a medium, small bok choy. The stuff that they have at the regular USA grocery stores is usually really, really big, like four times bigger than this. And that's fine. It ends up cooking more like spinach or Swiss chard and it's all leaves, no stems. And I don't like that. So um, I'm gonna just gonna quarter these up real quick so they cook super quickly. Vegetables cooked in a wok are one of my favorite things about wok cooking. You get something that's really snappy and fresh and it has a texture that you just don't get from like sauteing in a nonstick pan. Which by the way, this whole recipe can work in a nonstick pan if you're not indoctrinated into the world of wok yet. Just be careful. You gotta make sure you're cooking in a nonstick pan like sub 500 F. At that point, the, the pan coating degrades and it puts a bunch of noxious vapors into the air that is not good for you or, or the pan. So I just cut up like, I don't know, five or six pieces of bok choy that are about this big. And you got these at the international grocery store, right? Yes, I got these at the international grocery store. Like I said, the stuff in the normal grocery store can be a little bit big and I don't really like it. Um, so if you can track down a medium to small size Shanghai style bok choy, that would be perfect. But if you can't find this, broccolini would be a great sub or sugar snap peas would also be a good sub. Anything that's fresh and crunchy that will be delicious to eat after only like a minute of cooking. You don't want something that's gonna take a while. That's not really suited for wok cookery. So I'm just gonna take these over to the sink real quick and give them a quick rinse. And then very importantly, when I get these back over here, I'm gonna like dab them off because this is gonna be full of oil and extremely hot and you know, water and oil equal splatter and you'll get it all over your wrists and your fun weeknight 15 minute stir fry will be ruined by a trip to the urgent care. <laughs> I've got those set aside. Maybe like 16, 20 pieces of quartered bok choy. A small enough piece that in 40 to 60 seconds in a very hot pan, it's going to, um, it's gonna get some char on the outside, get steamed down a little bit and be ready to go. These are still dripping a little bit, so I'm going to just dab those off real quick. And then I'm gonna get my bok choy put back in the fridge with the other seven packages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's one down here. He's too. not joking. Yeah. Okay, Ooh. that stayed put, sick. I'm gonna grab some scallions too for future use. All right, next cutting is gonna be some oyster mushrooms. What's up with these, Bri? They're one of my favorite types of stir fry mushrooms uh, because they have a lot of moisture in them. So they're perfect for a wok. They create a lot of steam in the wok so they get cooked super quickly and they have an awesome texture once they're cooked. They're similar to a portabella in terms of they're like very meaty and like I said, they have a decent amount of moisture. So if you can't find an oyster mushroom that looks like this, I would say go for a portabella. I wouldn't recommend shiitake mushrooms for this. S sauteed shiitake mushrooms can be very delicious, but there's some kind of special techniques you need to use to get them as sort of soft and delicious as you can get these other two mushrooms that I mentioned. They can get kind of leathery when fried hard. So um, I don't love them for this. I'm just cutting these down in half into pieces that are like about bite size. They're gonna lose maybe 30% of their volume. In total, just like enough for two people. This is a two person recipe, by the way. So maybe, I don't know, 10 pieces per person. That's like probably enough right there. I'll put these other two back. And while you're cutting, um, we always have people asking, I don't like mushrooms. What are some subs that I can use? Do you have any recommendations? Well, I would just say throw in some more vegetables. Like you're not gonna replace the texture of mushrooms with really anything else. Um, but you know, baby corn is a pretty sick stir fry option or throw in another veggie like sugar snap peas. Um, that would be, that would be my move. Some people like water chestnuts in their stir fry. <laughs> nope. Not me. <laughs> okay. We're going to get some aromatics cut up real quick. Those are going to go in at the end. Like I said, like we want to make sure everything is kind of figured out before we get to the hot part. Most people who aren't used to multitasking in like a line cooking sense are going to burn something or get stressed out. And the fun of like a weeknight walk stir fry is gonna be, it's gonna feel uh, da more dangerous than, <laughs> than fun. All right, so I've got a bunch of scallions here. I grabbed maybe six of them. I'm gonna cut off the top like yucky parts cause those usually just end up being wilty. And uh, first, and also like green scallions cooked for me are not like that yum. They get kind of slimy and they're just not my favorite. So I'm going to cut the bottom two thirds into 
half inch size pieces, very rustic, very, very rustic. When do you preheat the wok? Actually, now is probably a good time because we're gonna finish up the aromatics, make the sauce, and we're gonna preheat the wok. This is a propane burner. Uh, I just got it. <laughs> and like, does it work? Does it work? Ooh, oh, yeah, it works. It does. It works. It's the same BTU exactly as like the burner I use for all the other videos. So it's not like a special wok burner or anything like that. So you don't need to worry about like having some specialty burner. It's gonna heat up just like it would over there. Okay, knob of ginger, like, I don't know, inch and a half, microplane, grater, rasp grater. I'm just gonna hit this on here real quick. Um, if you guys watch my videos, you know that I don't mess around with peeling ginger, um, especially for like weeknight videos, especially if I'm grating it, because for me, the peel of the ginger, it's not like bitter or anything, and it breaks down super easily, so I'm not too concerned about it. So I don't know, a uh, tablespoon of ginger. That was like a one and a half inch knob. And then I've got peeled garlic, which I use peeled garlic. I don't like to peel it. I don't buy fresh garlic and peel it. So if you're gonna judge me for that, that's on you. <laughs> I've got like five cloves here, four cloves here. Heavy garlic. For the most part, the quality of peeled garlic is pretty high. Sometimes it'll go bad in mold before you finish it all, but I use a lot of it and it lasts in the fridge for a couple weeks. Rarely do I throw away more than a couple of cloves. Now my wok is good and preheated, so it's time to cook. But first, I'll take a sip of some very tasty nutrition from the sponsor of this video. AG1. AG1 has been supporting my whole body health as part of my daily routine for well over the last two years. Right now on a typical day, I get up, do my bathroom stuff, then head downstairs to the kitchen and mix a scoop of AG1 into some water and pound it on the way to the gym. When I get to the gym, I get in some overall movement and make sure to crush some weight. Then I head home to shower, always end on cold. <sighs> And then I get started with my day. Today is the day after filming this chicken in the wok video, so I'm doing some light R&D on the next recipe. Thanks to the rhodiola, magnesium, and B vitamins in my AG1 this morning, I'm looking at sustained energy support throughout my entire day without a caffeine crash. Plus, AG1 is just a great overall nutrient replenishment. It has a broad spectrum of micronutrients and phytonutrients to keep my bod nourished all day, no matter what other crap I might put into it. So if you want to try it, head to the link in my description description below and get a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus five free travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Okay, the wok is smoking. What about the sauce? We're gonna make that, but first I'm gonna get some veggies cooking. So it goes a squiggy of oil, maybe about a tablespoon and a half. And then I'm gonna add in my chicken. And so far we've only really made like two dirty dishes. That's pretty good. A little bit of salt goes in, and then I'm just gonna spread this out in the wok to get the surface area of the chicken touching the wok as best I can. We're gonna let that kind of hang out for a second. I would say that I'm mid on keeping my wok season properly. Lauren does most of the dishes, so she's the one who's usually wiping it out with oil and taking good care of it. I'm not, so like I used this yesterday and then kind of just scratched it out and it's not, it's not the most seasoned it could possibly be. So we're gonna let the chicken cook for a second so that it doesn't get all stuck. If I were to like start tossing this right away, the chicken would probably stick a little bit. So I'm gonna give it like 30 seconds and then wash the raw chicken off my hand. And I see you adjusted the heat a little bit. Were you turning it down because it was a little too high or what were you doing? I was turning it up just cause I'm still trying to figure this burner out. And I like started it on medium, but now it's on high. Now we're ripping. <laughs> It's been about a minute and a half, so we're gonna come in and give our chicken a little stir here. If anything is stuck, no big deal. Like it'll loosen right up with a wooden spoon. When it comes to cooking chicken in a wok, you wanna cook it to like medium, medium plus, cause it's gonna carry over once we take it off. And then we're also gonna be putting it back in later with some sauce. So it's going to get cooked more. You just wanna be careful about cooking it too much. There are some more advanced wok techniques, mainly velveting, which is like a Chinese restaurant style technique that coats the outside of the meat that can make it pretty impervious to any amount of high heat cooking. We're not doing that because this is a, you know, as fast as possible weeknight recipe. So you just gotta kind of keep an eye on it. Once you feel like the breast is crossing over that medium point, where maybe it's like 60%, 70% cooked, you're gonna wanna take it out. 
So this has got maybe another 30 seconds. So I'm gonna grab a bowl to land it in. Medium stainless bowl coming over. And I'm feeling good about that. It's got some color on it. It's not like so hard hit by the sear that it's like dry. I feel like it's about 65, 70% of the way there. And like I said, it's gonna carry over once we take it off and we're gonna be cooking it in some sauce. So off heat into a bowl and walk goes back on heat. Based on how much meat stuff is still in there, you might have to wipe your wok out. I am gonna give it a quick wipe out with a wet paper towel. If there's too much residge meat in there, over the next three or four minutes of cooking, it's just gonna end up getting kinda burnt. Burn is bad. So we're gonna let that come back up. Add a little bit more oil, maybe a tablespoon and a half. And I'm gonna go in first with the mushrooms and just a touch of salt. I don't know if they use salt in Chinese restaurants or not as they season and cook or as they cook, but for me, the French restaurant cooking style that I came up with, like you season as you go. You constantly season. Every step of the way, you're adding a little bit of salt. So that's just like a habit that's very hard for me to break. Um, so I'm gonna give these maybe a minute and a half, 90 seconds, keeping them moving. If your wok is nice and hot, as the mushrooms hit the side here, that's where like the most actual cooking is being done. Cause like the sides are, are so ripping hot that they cr like create a ton of steam in like this very localized environment that softens the mushrooms really, really quite fast. That's something that you just don't get from like a nonstick cooking situation. The heat's a lot lower. You're not getting as much of that transient steam surrounding the food. So instead of having like this very high temp result on the outside with sort of a slightly snappier, I wouldn't say raw, but less cooked inside, that variation is hard to get with more of a medium high heat in a nonstick pan. So we're, we're about halfway there. You can see that we're already starting to get a little bit of color on the mushrooms and they're starting to wilt down a little bit. Smoke level in the home? High. It's like a seven out of 10. Yeah. I'm reluctant to turn up the fan too much because I don't want the audio to get screwed up, but we're just gonna like sort of see what happens. We'll deal with the consequences later. Okay. Eh, these are looking pretty good. We'll make the sauce while the bok choy is in. Maybe 10 more seconds and we'll pull these out. As you can see, they cook down by maybe 60, 40 to 60%. If you start tossing these ones too much, they really start to crumble. You can already see like we've got a little bit of crumbled oyster. So I don't wanna go too much further. I'm gonna take these off the heat into the bowl with my chicken. And I'm not too worried about that little bit of mushroom stuff that's in the pan there, so I'm not gonna wipe it out again. A little bit more oil. As I go here, maybe a little bit less oil. I don't wanna have this final dish to have six tablespoons in it. That's too much for two people. So I don't know, teaspoon and a half. We'll let that get hot really quick before we add in our bok. The bok choy is gonna cook super quick, so hopefully we have enough time to get our sauce figured out. We should. Once we're smoking again, make sure you're don't have a ton of water so you don't burn yourself. And then bok choy in, tiny bit of salt, and then a quick toss to get everything kind of touching the oil. We'll come back in just a second. Let's talk about our sauce. Tear out my scale with my sauce container, and then I'll grab my tote of Asian ingredients. This is just how I find it easiest to move these things around my kitchen. I'm always gonna be using them together, so. Okay, 25 grams of soy sauce, five grams of sesame oil. Give our bok choy a toss. You can see we've already got some, just a kiss of browning going on on the leaves. This bottom, more fibrous part, is gonna take a, maybe another minute to a minute and a half. We're gonna go with 25 grams of oyster sauce. And if you guys don't wanna use a scale, just eyeball it, you know? It's basically rough, equal parts oyster, soy, and um, mirin and a little sesame oil and a little ch uh, chicken stock. After the oyster, we're gonna go with 15 grams of, or 25 grams of mirin. We're gonna add in 50 grams of chicken stock real quick. I'll reserve a little chicken stock because I might need to thin my sauce later. And then we're gonna go with five grams of cornstarch. The bok choy is looking really, really good. We're almost there. So five grams of cornstarch. Okay. And then my preferred method to combine all this stuff is a little, Milk frother. I just think it's like the best way to stir stuff. Look at that thing. Oh my God. Okay. 
we're just gonna stir that up to get that cornstarch dissolved real quick. And then our bok choy <laughs> is looking pretty good. So yeah, look at that. Good timing. It's like roasty around the edges. Um, the, the leaves are wilted, but the bottom is still like intact. That's gonna have a nice snap to it. You don't wanna go much further than that. The beauty of that bok choy is the contrast between those super hard fried leaves and uh, the sort of semi crunchy bottoms, okay? We've got our sauce ready to go. We've got our scallions and then the rest of our aromatics and a very, very hot wok. One last tiny bit of oil going in and then we're gonna very quickly saute our aromatics to open them up a little bit. I throw the scallions in first because they're gonna add a kind of a buffer to keep the garlic and ginger from just like instantly sticking. They're grated, they're pulpy, and they like to stick and they'll burn really fast. So the scallions kind of keep them off the bottom of the wok. So just a quick toss here to get those all fried off. No salt at this stage, there's already gonna be plenty of salt. We're not trying to draw out any moisture here or anything like that. So you can see I've got a little char on the scallions and it's like just, ooh, it smells really good. It's quite pungent. Now we're going to add the sauce around the edge to kind of sear it. This is a classic Chinese restaurant move that I don't want to say it adds wok hei, H-E-I, but that sort of like seared flavor from the outer edge, that slight burning that it does to the sauce does bring some fun flavor. Instantly, this is going to thicken up quite a bit. It might be too thick. We're going to see. We're going to add everything in and we're going to taste it. And if we need to add a little bit more stock, we will. Okay. So chicken, mushrooms, bok choy into the mix here. We'll give that a stir and a toss. It's looking a little grippy. So I'm gonna go grab my stock and add in a splash to make it a little saucier. I'm adding in another maybe 20 grams. You know, the amount of liquid is gonna vary depending on how hot your wok is, how loose you like your sauce. You know, maybe you add an extra gram of cornstarch on accident and all of a sudden it's like 10% thicker. So there's a lot of variables, but for me, that's perfect. You see there's like a little bit of sauce, that sauce has enough kind of thickness to it so that it's not gonna just overly saturate the rice. It's gonna kind of grip everything a little bit. This is gonna continue to reduce as it cools. You can see my bok choy isn't hammered either. It's kind of got some nice texture and it stands out as well. And the mushrooms are just gonna absorb all of that sauce. All right, so off heat. So I've got a plate here. One, I'll grab one for me and one for Lauren. Thanks to internet Shaquille for sending us these plates. Yeah, okay. Rice down first, bring that over. Scoop on like, I don't know, cups, cup and a half, two cups of rice, cooked rice into the middle of each plate. And then we're gonna move into splitting up this stir fry. All right, check that out. Looks awesome. So to me, it is got a little bit of sauce, sauciness to it. That's gonna be great when combined with the rice. If it's too loose, it's just like you're eating weird soup on a plate, that's not good. If it's too thick, it's just glop. Glop is bad, mark my words, glop is bad. <laughs> you know, it depends on your appetite. You could save a little bit and have one portion for, of leftovers for tomorrow, but normally like I'll plate up a aspirational portion for Lauren and I like, oh yeah, we don't eat that much. And then like, we'll both come back to the stove and get some. Ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna get a mushroom first. I'll go for that chicken. Mm. No fake yum needed. Very, very yum. It's salty and sweet. Not too much of either. The sauce has a great viscosity. The mushrooms are totally full of that soy sauce mirin combination. Great texture. Mm -hmm. They've also got a little bit of a lick of uh, caramelization on the outside. So I love that. Mm. I love the bok choy cooked that way. Bok choy is Lauren's favorite vegetable. So snappy. Yeah, snappy, fresh. So if you can get that size, highly recommend it. And this proves that it can be done in probably 20 minutes. I don't know where we are. 23-ish. Yeah, as, as long as it takes your rice to cook, which is awesome. Yeah, that's the goal. Start cooking rice, get to work on the wok. This so, is delicious, anybody would like this. So that's a totally new style of video for us. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. This is a really fun way for me to share a recipe and it's maybe a way for you guys to see a different side of like how I cook. Let me know down in the comments and uh, try out this recipe. See you next time. Ooh, let's dance. <gasps> oh, oh, dance.